Proverbs chapter 20. Verse 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies. But the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Right. Now, Wednesday night we looked at the thought that knowledge puffeth up. And we looked at what knowledge should not become in our lives. Amen. But we know through all that we've studied down through the years that God certainly intends for us to have knowledge. And, and Solomon is telling us here under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God that the lips of knowledge are a precious Jew. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge for him for a strange woman. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Well, that's certainly between verse 15 and verse number 17. There's uh, two drastically uh, differences about mouths. I think I would rather be found in verse 15 than in verse 17. I just don't think it'd be very comfortable to have a mouth filled with breath. <laughs> and I can only imagine what it would do to the inside of, uh, to your teeth and to your gums and to the inside of your cheeks and to your lips themselves. The Bible said this in verse 18. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. And with good advice, make war. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. You pray with me and you can be seated. Our Father and our God, this morning as we bow in your divine presence, we certainly thank you, Father, again for another glorious day. Yeah. And Father, certainly it is a glorious day. Father, we're alive, we're well. I, and God, you've blessed us and, and allowed us to come and be in your house. I, Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, as the psalmist David said, follows us all the days of our lives. I, and Father, we thank you for your mercy. And dear God, we thank you for your loving kindness. I, and Father, we thank you for your love. I, Lord, we thank you for your dear son. I, Lord, we thank you for the word of God. And as we sung the songs about the blood this morning, I, Father, we thank you for his blood, your blood, I, I, Father, that was shed for the remission of sins. I, God, we thank you for all of the blood that has been applied to those of our lives that are saved this morning. I, and Father, we know, dear God, that if there's someone here today that's not saved, I, oh, today would be a good day for the blood to be applied and for their sins to be forgiven. Given. And Father, for them to be washed and made whole. I, Father, we just pray this morning that you'll have your way I, I, throughout all of this day, not just in the service this morning, I, but God, have your way in our lives throughout the course of this day. I, I, this afternoon between services, Father, we certainly I, I desire to seek your face and seek your will. I, and Father, allow everything, dear God, that's done today I, I, just to bring glory and honor unto you. I, Father, I pray this morning I, as we We've read from the pages of your word. I ask you, dear God, I, I, Father, that you'll anoint me afresh and good again this morning. I, I pray, Father, that you'll illuminate my mind once again. I, I realize, Father, I'm an earthen vessel, and I pray, dear God, that you'll fill me with the Holy Ghost of God. I, and, Lord, that you'll use me today, I, I, Father, to be a help and to be a blessing and an encouragement, Father, to your children. I, I ask you, Father, this morning, as you know the thoughts and the intents of every heart, I, God, that you'll speak to us as individuals in this body of believers. I, but Father, I pray as well, dear God, that you'll speak to us as a church, as a body, a whole. I, I God, and just have your way. I, Lord, we pray that you remove any hindering spirit that might be in our midst I, as we plead the blood of Jesus Christ I, over this service and over this day. And ask these things in his lovely name. I, thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do today. I, amen and amen. I, all right, go ahead and be seated right there this morning and leave your Bibles open, if you will, please. And I want you to notice these verses of Scripture again with me. 
God. Uh, beginning in verse number 15, notice what Solomon said. Uh, there is gold and a multitude of rubies, uh, uh, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Uh, uh, take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a strange woman. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't believe that uh, it's by chance that here in verse number 16, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, it being spoken of of a strange woman. Uh, and then in verse number 17, you find bread and deceit. Uh, and certainly the strangest of women we find in the Word of God is found in Revelation chapter number 17. Uh, and we know that through her uh, uh, certainly has come much bread of deceit uh, uh, down through the years. Uh, and still yet, uh, uh, the Bible said in verse 17, bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Now I'm not preaching on verse 16 and 17 this morning. Now, notice again now verse number 18. The Bible says this, every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war and with good advice make war. Now we'll come to that later in the message but my main thought comes out of verse number 15. In verse number 15 the Bible says this, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. But the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. But now notice the first part of verse number 15. There is gold and a multitude of rubies. And when you go back and study in the Old Testament, friend, especially in David's day and then in Solomon's day, in the day, the early days of those kings, friend, there was an abundance of gold and there was an abundance of rubies. And really, friend, they didn't have the assertion to them. And they didn't really have uh, uh, friend, all of the glory applied to them back then that they do now. Uh, and certainly in Solomon's day, uh, uh, gold was not worth what it is today uh, as far as man is concerned. Uh, uh, gold is at an all-time high and people are selling gold right and left. Uh, uh, somebody said, well, if there was a multitude of gold, what happened to it? Uh, well, I don't know what happened to all of it, friend. I, I know a lot of it down through the years has found its way into the landfills around the world as people uh, necklaces broke and they, instead of taking it to the jeweler and getting it fixed just threw it in a trash can and gets hauled out to the landfill gold earrings are broke and instead of being fixed tossed into the garbage pail and carted off in rings the very same way people have lost things And uh, but what I want you to see friend is in this verse, uh, uh, Solomon is telling you uh, uh, where uh, uh, the greatest value is placed in his day. Uh, and it was not on gold and it was not on rubies, uh, uh, but it was put in precious jewels. Uh, and there is a difference. Uh, uh, but with Solomon, he's declaring here, uh, but the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Uh, now, everybody here would like to have gold this morning and everybody here would like to have rubies. Uh, uh, but the scriptures are declaring unto us uh, uh, that more precious than that uh, is lips of knowledge. Uh, uh, I want to give you three things this morning uh, and, and this will lead us into where I want to end up down in verse number 18. Uh, but I want to give you three things about a precious jewel this morning. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, a precious jewel is something that everyone should want to acquire. Uh, and so it's something to be acquired. Uh, and in Solomon's day, no doubt. I, I mean, listen, when we go back and we see some of the stories uh, uh, that's been left behind and told in the Scripture uh, uh, to be a help and a blessing to us, uh, uh, you go back, you think about when I preached on a camel named Grace. Uh, and one of the things that we dealt with back there, friend, concerning Rebecca uh, and that unnamed servant uh, uh, was the bag that he carried on his side. Uh, and for him, that bag was the jewels uh, and the presence things uh, that belong to Isaac uh, and how along that journey uh, uh, friend of over 500 miles uh, uh, and all of the 
adversity that they face, friend, every once in a while, that unnamed servant, a type of the Holy Spirit, I would just reach down in that bag and thank God pull out another precious Jew and give it to Rebecca and then no doubt tell her about Isaac, the one that she's going to be married to that she was presently betrothed to. A precious jewel is something that should be acquired and there should be a desire for us to acquire those things. I know all ladies don't like jewelry, but most ladies do. Amen. I mean, friend, listen, I said something yesterday while Mama was gone and I hadn't got her anything for Christmas yet and I really didn't know what I was going to get her for Christmas and then she just said, get her a piece of jewelry. Amen. Well, that's simple enough. Everybody knows she likes jewelry. Amen. But, friend, I mean, look, you can only have so much. Some of y'all don't think that, but you can only have so much. You only have so many fingers and you only have so many toes and you can only rotate so often. Amen. And uh, But I know, I, I know if, if I want to please her, I, I just go out and pick her out some precious jewel I, and bring it home, friend, and she'll be delighted in that. I, I, I'm the one that has to go out and acquire it. Amen. I, well, listen, Solomon is trying to let us know I, that the thing that we should want to acquire in our life I, is knowledge. I, Amen. I, we might have that jewel, I, I, friend, and that our lips... I, I might become that precious Jew. I, I, and listen, we looked last Sunday I, 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 Acts chapter number 26 I, and we saw where Paul stood before Agrippa I, and we saw where zeal plus knowledge I, I used by a wise men, I, I, friend, I, I, we saw how that is supposed to be accomplished I, and what we're supposed to be in the world today. I, and uh, listen, I, I, the world certainly needs Christians uh, uh, friend, uh, that have acquired uh, uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, we're living in a day, friend, uh, uh, when there's a lot of turmoil. Uh, uh, we're living in a day uh, uh, when there's a lot of questions being asked. Uh, but so many uh, uh, are so often friend, uh, uh, there's not the right questions being answered. Uh, you work with people in the workplace uh, uh, that are concerned about the condition that our country's in. Uh, that's concerned about the condition that the world's in. Uh, that's concerned about the economy, I, I'm not just here at home, but abroad. I, I'm concerned about whether or not we are in the last days. I, I'm talking about, I, is the Antichrist alive now? Lost people I, are talking about the Antichrist. I, lost people are talking about the last days. I, they've got questions. I, I, friend, I, I, their questions no doubt deserve to be answered, I, but they need to be answered with somebody I, that's acquired the knowledge. And that through wisdom, friend, can make right application of that knowledge and the zeal that they have in their heart to be able, friend, to help them to realize that the most important answer is not who the Antichrist is, but whether or not you're going to be here when he comes on the scene. Amen. I mean, friend, listen, whatever God uses as the open door, you still need to recognize the fact that when God saved you, he wanted you to acquire something something in your life and from cover to cover in the book of God I friend I were challenged over and over to accumulate that knowledge in our heart that God might be able to use his people in these last days Amen Amen. It's something that you and I should desire to acquire Amen. You know I shared this with you the other night Some of y'all looked at me funny And some of y'all smiled And some of y'all nodded your head But I told you what Brother Tab had shared with me About, about the studies that had been done And, and what he had read I, About how people that I read a lot I, Are less likely to develop all hymns Amen I, Well I understand why some of y'all looked at me funny I, It's because some of you don't have a desire to read I, And so if you don't have a desire to read I, I, Then you don't have a desire to acquire knowledge in your life. Yeah. Amen. Look, friend, you've got to read the Scripture right, in order to acquire this precious Jew. Right? And for that to be a part of your life, right, you've got to read. Right? One of the things that the Apostle Paul told young Timothy 